Now to the next method, the pressure feedback method. How does that work? The, the pressure condition in this method is fed back from downstream condition to the upstream flow source element. That means we have a loop like down here from the downstream elements. It's going back to the complete system up to the uh, upstream element. And the source element is then solving for the mass flow iteratively. In branches, the splitter is solving for the mass flow div division. And all these iterations happen in time domain. That means you have an overlay between the iterative solution of the pressure equations and your system dynamics. This is important to keep in mind when you work with this method. Let's have a look how that looks like in reality. Um, in, if you have prepared here a little example, with the, uh, which is similar to the two tank example. On the left side, we have a liquid tank here with constant pressure. And the right tank we replaced here by a downstream condition block. A downstream block is setting a pressure um, on a certain point of the network. And in this pressure feedback method, you can use this downstream block um, like an outlet um, of your of an open branch. Um, in our example, it would be a medium which is coming from here, going through the valve, and then it's left out to the environment, for example. And our environment is configured to have a pressure of 3 bar. So here at the downstream, you fix the pressure to a 3 bar. This is what you want to have. <clears throat> and now the question is, how does the valve, uh, how, how does this calculation performed? You see here the green lines is f explicit feedback of pressure information to the block before. So you have this pressure information from the downstream block, uh, which is fed back to the tank. In the tank, there is an iterative solver, which is setting the mass flow. And we, when we run simulation, and look at the re simulation result, we see that in the first diagram, we see the pressure at the outlet of the, um, of the valve. We see that it's sharply rising to 3 bar, which is our boundary condition. And at the point when we switch the valve, that's at 100 seconds here, um, there's a short drop, but it's rising again back to the 3 bar, which is given as the downstream condition. How is that done? It's done by the liquid tank, which is adjusting the flow, um, first to a certain flow to match this 3 bar condition. And then when we change the valve, um, the pressure drop is changing, and so the iterative solver has to find another um, flow to match the three bar condition again. Okay, so that is how the method works. So we have an iterative solver inside here. Maybe two remarks how to tune this method or what are important influences to this method. Uh, in the liquid tank, there's a relaxation factor here. Okay, if you open the mask, you see this relaxation for factor for PF, which is pressure feedback. And this is um, controlling the iterative solver. If you make it low, for example, and run simulation again. We, we will see that the resulting um, iteration is much slower than in the example of the relaxation factor of 50. So you see that you can influence the solver through this um, parameter. A second important influence is the simulink, um, the, the simulation solver itself. So if you go to your configuration of your model, we have here chosen a fixed step solver of step size 1. If you choose a step size of 10, then we will see that the dynamic behavior is much worse than uh, in the example with the 1, because each iteration uh, happens uh, in one simulation time step. So the more steps you have, the, the more iterations you make in your pressure feedback solver. Okay? So these are the two tuning knobs for this method to get reasonable results. But keep in mind that this dynamics is overlaying with the system dynamics. Let's have a look to a more complex system with this pressure feedback method. <coughs> 
here again our branch and cycle example. So we have a pump here. Then we have a splitter. So our three-way valve is replaced here by a splitter. So we don't know how much the um, mass flow is going to the left or to the right. It should be calculated automatically. And then we have the two branches. Each of them has a valve. One is fixed. The other one has changing position. And the green, uh, then the, the, uh, the flows is going together to the mixer. The green lines, again, are the pressure feedback information, um, which fe are feeding back the pressure feedback signals. OK, so how are the blocks configured here? The pump um, is not um, anymore a feed pump or a pump which is forcing a mass flow. It's here chosen to be a circulation pump because it's inside of a, of a circle uh, of this cycle. And you see here a relaxation factor again. So um, the circulation pump tries to solve for a reference pressure. And that means um, this reference pressure is the pressure which should be at the inlet of the, uh, of the feedback pump. Okay, so this pump tries to find a mass flow that the pressure at the inlet is exactly the reference pressure. So the splitter is diverting the mass flow, and if you run simulation, we see how the system reacts. Um, in the upper diagram, we see the two uh, mass flows through the system. So um, after an initial uh, phase, we have constant mass flows in the two branches. Then we change the speed of the pump. Then both mass flows will rise. You see that here. and at um, 15 seconds, we are changing one of the valves, valve positions. So one mass flow will go up, the other one will go down. Okay. The two other signals, which are displayed in the lower part, are pressure signals. These are the pressures, um, the end pressures of the branches. So the pressure behind the first valve and the pressure behind the second valve. And you see here that they are mainly um, the same most of the time, only when we change dynamically something, then the iterative solver and the splitter, which is maintaining the um, equality, that the two pressures should be the same, uh, is down working to match the pressures again. Okay, This is how the method works. Yeah, so you can model more or less complex systems with branches, cycles, and solving exactly the pressure, uh, solving the pressure equations iteratively in the time domain. There's a drawback, but um, yeah, you can use it for complex hydraulic networks. Okay, then switch back to the presentation. Yeah, we did some remarks about the tunability of this method with, through the relaxation factor and have mentioned the you know, fact that the solver settings are important as each simulation step is an iteration, uh, an iteration step. So each simulation step in your solver is an iteration step in the pressure solver. So when do you use this method? If you have a, you use it when you have a bigger number of elements which you are connect to each other. If you have really significant feedback, of information necessary to model your complete system. But you have also seen that um, it does not go very well with highly dynamic changes. So um, we would recommend this only if you have slow dynamic pressure changes. So you work in a quasi steady operation um, of your pressure conditions. It's suitable for gas, for liquids, for two phases. So all that can be done with the method. So in that sense, it's, it's really good for that. Advantages, of course, that there are f you have relatively small calculation times due to low number of volumes, so you don't have to have um, too many state calculations. You have multiple pressure drop elements you, which you can put in a row to um, combine them to one branch in your network. Uh, it's suitable for liquids, which is really a difficult thing. And the real physical feedback of pressure is realized. Um, the disadvantage, of course, is that the solution is in time domain. So, as you have seen, you have an overlay about in, uh, of the numeric pressure iteration and the dynamic process behavior. 
and you have some to tune the method, so some tuning is necessary. And due to these disadvantages, we um, created a new method in Thermolib, which we call the volume flow volume method, which we show you now. 